The history of the ancient Hebrews is a challenging topic. The most crucial source we have about it is the Hebrew Bible itself, which intricately describes the struggles, enslavement, battles, triumphs, and achievements of the Hebrews. The problem with using the Hebrew Bible as a historical source lies in its mythic mode of writing, akin to the literature of other Iron Age civilizations. Many events concerning the Hebrews are attributed to direct divine intervention rather than a straightforward historical approach. Additionally, the Hebrew Bible was written some 400,600 years after the events it narrates. Thus, our knowledge about the ancient Hebrews primarily consists of the stories from the Hebrew Bible, supplemented by archaeological findings and information from other historical sources. According to the Hebrew Bible, the first patriarch, or male clan leader, of the Hebrews was Abraham. He led the Hebrews away from Mesopotamia around 1900 BCE. Leaving the Mesopotamian city of Iyar, the Hebrews became wandering herders. Interestingly, the term Hebrew originally meant wanderer or nomad. Abraham had a son, Isaac, who, in turn, had a son named Jacob. Together, they are known as the patriarchs in the Hebrew Bible. The Mesopotamian origins of the Hebrews remain unclear from sources outside the Hebrew Bible. Archaeological evidence suggests that the Hebrews might have originated from the Levant, with trade connections to Mesopotamia, rather than originating directly from Mesopotamia. According to Jewish belief, Abraham's most significant act was agreeing to the covenant, a promise made between the Hebrews and the god Yahweh. The name Yahweh derives from the Hebrew phrase, I am who I am, the enigmatic response of God when asked for his name by the prophet Moses and the Hebrews. The covenant stipulated that, in exchange for their devotion, worship, and the circumcision of all Hebrew males, the Hebrews would receive from Yahweh a land of milk and honey, a place of peace and prosperity for all time. Around 1600 BCE, the Hebrews went to Egypt to escape famine and were welcomed by the Hyksos dynasty during the second intermediate period of ancient Egypt. The Hyksos were fellow Canaanites and seemingly encouraged the Hebrews to stay. With the rise of the new kingdom, the Hebrews were enslaved, and their leader, Moses, led them away sometime around 1300 to 1200 BCE. There is little archaeological or Egyptian textual evidence to fully support the story of the Hebrews' complete enslavement. However, there are references in Egyptian sources to Canaanite laborers. Pharaoh Merneptah makes a passing reference to a people he simply called Israel, living in Canaan in 1207 BCE, which is the strongest evidence of the Hebrews' presence in Canaan during the Late Bronze Age. According to the Hebrew Bible, Moses not only led the Hebrews out of Egypt but also modified the covenant. In addition to exclusive worship of Yahweh and the circumcision of all male Hebrews, the covenant was amended to include specific rules of behavior, the Ten Commandments. The Hebrews had to abide by these commandments for Yahweh to guarantee their prosperity in the Promised Land. As noted earlier, the tales presented in the Hebrew Bible often cannot be verified empirically and bear the imprint of earlier traditions. Many stories in the Hebrew Bible are drawn from earlier Mesopotamian legends. For example, the story of Moses closely resembles the account of Sargon the Great's rise from obscurity in Akkadian tradition. The flood legend described in the Bible's first book, Genesis, is directly taken from the Epic of Gilgamesh. However, the motivations of the Mesopotamian gods differ from that of Yahweh. Archaeological evidence confirms that the Hebrews began settling in Canaan around 1200 BCE. The Egyptian record from 1207 BCE, as noted earlier, includes the pharaoh boasting about his conquests in Canaan, including Israel. The story of Moses leading the Hebrews out of slavery in Egypt might also be based on events associated with the collapse of the Bronze Age, a period of upheaval during which various groups, including the Hebrews, sought freedom. Have you ever pondered the mysterious origins of the Hebrew people? Who were they really, and where did they come from? With their unwavering faith in one God, a belief instilled by Eber himself, unlike the polytheistic cultures of their time, the Hebrews stood firm in their devotion to a singular, all-powerful God. Through the ages, this faith became the cornerstone of Hebrew identity, guiding their moral compass and distinguishing them from other nations. Even in the face of adversity, they remained steadfast in their commitment to their divine calling. But the story doesn't end there. From the patriarch Abraham to the gathering at Mount Sinai, the Hebrew journey is marked by moments of revelation and transformation. It is a story of faith, resilience, and unwavering devotion to their God. Join us as we delve into the depths of Hebrew history, exploring the connections between Eber, Abraham, and the chosen people of Israel. In this video, we will explore various theories surrounding the origin of the Hebrews, including the connection between the Hebrews and the Apiru, a group of people of low social status who roamed the plains of Syria and Canaan. We will also delve into the spiritual legacy of Abraham and his profound influence on the Hebrew people.
Let yourself be captivated by tales of Abraham, the father of the chosen nation, and the establishment of the Hebrews as a separate and distinct group at Mount Sinai. We will also shed light on how the Hebrews were perceived by foreigners and the lasting legacy they have left behind among the descendants of Shem. One figure stands out in the intricate tapestry of Hebrew history, Eber. This great-grandson of Noah is enveloped in a shroud of mystery, his name etched in the annals of time. From him flows a noble lineage, giving birth to a people who carry a profound legacy, the Hebrew descendants, bearers of a rich heritage that spans generations. Eber's name, resonating with antiquity, is often linked to the very essence of the Hebrews. Some scholars propose that the Hebrews are the progeny of Eber, tracing their ancestral roots back to his time. Sons were also born to Shem, whose older brother was Japheth. Shem, as the ancestor of all the sons of Eber, occupies a pivotal role, bridging the gap between the pre-flood era and the emerging generations within the Semitic race. The descendants of Shem and Eber emerged as a distinct and exceptional group, embracing a noble faith steeped in moral values that set them apart from the masses. Within this sacred lineage, the seeds of Hebrew culture, identity, and destiny find their roots. Even before Abraham's spiritual journey began, the foundation was laid by Eber, setting the stage for a remarkable legacy that would endure through the ages. Eber's revolution recognized and embraced the belief in one God, paving the way for future generations. His lineage positions him not only as a patriarch but also as a prophet and teacher, imparting divine wisdom to his descendants. Legend has it that Shem, Eber's forefather, along with Eber himself, played pivotal roles in the spiritual education of the Hebrews. Their teachings guided the Hebrews on the path of righteousness and deepened their connection to the divine. The belief in one God, fostered by Eber's spiritual influence, became the cornerstone of the Hebrews' noble faith. This faith set them apart from other nations, defining their identity and shaping their moral values throughout history. Few names carry the weight and significance of Abraham. Known as Abraham the Hebrew, his very nickname sets him apart from the nations of the world. One who had escaped came and reported this to Abram the Hebrew, Genesis 14 verse 13. His distinction lies not only in his lineage but also in his unwavering belief in one God. The title Hebrew speaks volumes about Abraham's identity and the stark contrast between his faith and the beliefs of those around him. Unlike the pantheon of gods worshipped by other nations, Abraham's unwavering devotion is directed towards a single divine entity. His faith and adherence to this monotheistic belief form the foundation upon which the Hebrew identity stands. It is a belief that rejects the polytheism of surrounding cultures, proclaiming the existence of a singular, all-powerful God. The Hebrews, descendants of Abraham, inherit this noble faith that rejects the worship of false idols and embraces a higher spiritual calling. Their faith shapes their moral compass, guiding their actions, and distinguishing them from other nations. To the Hebrews, the term Hebrew is more than just an ancestral label, it is a badge of honor, a reminder of their divine calling, and a testament to their unyielding commitment to their faith and their God. Within this lineage, a careful sifting process unfolded to select those who would carry the torch of faith and continue Abraham's legacy. Ishmael and Esau were deemed unsuitable for the weighty responsibility of the spiritual lineage. Instead, it was Jacob, along with his twelve sons, who emerged as the chosen vessels of the Jewish nation. These twelve sons, also known as the twelve tribes of Israel, carried within them the spiritual fitness required to carry forward the path established by Abraham. With each passing generation, the Hebrews grew and evolved, preserving their ancestral heritage and spiritual lineage. Their journey forged the foundation of what would become known as the Jewish nation, a nation uniquely encapsulating the spiritual legacy bequeathed by their ancestors in the ancient world. The term Hebrews carried more weight than mere identification, it was often used as a derogatory name by the Canaanites, Egyptians, and Philistines to distinguish the Hebrews from the Gentiles. The perception of the Hebrews as a distinct group with their own set of beliefs and moral values set them apart from the surrounding nations. At the foot of Mount Sinai, a moment of divine revelation awaited the Hebrew people. Here, they would receive the sacred words of the Bible and the commandments that would shape their destiny. Now if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession, Exodus 19.5. It was a pivotal moment, one that marked their distinction as the chosen people, set apart by their unwavering faith and adherence to a unique moral code. With reverence and anticipation, the Hebrews gathered to witness the full expression of their spiritual identity as they received the divine teachings from God Himself. Their nation took on a newfound form, they became a united people bound together by the sacred covenant and entrusted with the responsibility of fulfilling their heavenly mandate. The establishment of the Hebrew nation at Mount Sinai was a transformative event, forging a specific identity for this chosen group. 
They were no longer merely a collection of tribes or individuals, they were now a nation with a purpose and a destiny. The commandments they received became the foundation of their laws, guiding their actions, and shaping their communal life. With every step, the Hebrews carried their unique status as the chosen people. Their unwavering commitment to God's teachings and commandments set them apart from the nations that surrounded them. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be His people, His treasured possession, Deuteronomy 7 6. As the commandments became the basis of their society, the Hebrews distinguished themselves as people who lived by divine principles and moral values. The biblical use of the term, Hebrew, is surprisingly absent from the books of Kings, Joshua, and Judges, which chronicle the historical story of the Hebrews. However, the term, Hebrew, prominently emerges in the book of Samuel, where its usage takes on an unusual twist. Here, it is often employed as a negative name wielded by foreigners to refer to the esteemed children of Israel. When the Philistines heard the uproar, they asked, What's all this shouting in the Hebrew camp? 1 Samuel 4 6. This intriguing revelation sheds light on the perception of the Hebrews as a distinct and different group set apart from the surrounding nations. As we delve deeper into the book of Samuel, we unravel the layers of its poetic narrative, discovering the complex interplay between the term Hebrew and the children of Israel. While the ancient world revered gods and goddesses of various pantheons, the Hebrews adhered fervently to the worship of a single god. Their faith in a monotheistic god was seen as revolutionary, challenging the polytheistic beliefs prevalent in their time. They exchanged their glorious god for an image of a bull, which eats grass. They forgot the god who saved them, who had done great things in Egypt, Psalm 106 verses 19-20. In the pursuit of uncovering the rich tapestry of Hebrew history, scholars have offered various theories to explain the origin of the Hebrew people. One captivating theory posits a connection between the Hebrews and a group known as the Apiru. These Apiru were wanderers of low social status traversing the lands of Canaan and Syria. Yet consensus remains elusive for academics as they seek to identify the true relationship between the Hebrews and the Apiru. The term Hebrew reaches beyond a singular group, encompassing a gathering of wanderers who share the same lands. Among these wandering souls were the Israelites of biblical renown. However, the true meaning of the term Hebrew and the origins of the Hebrew people remain subjects of both debate and interpretation.